Howdy, creative photographers. I'm Haley from Creative Photo Folk, and today I'll be showing you how to create the Adamski effect. The Adamski effect is named after Josh Adamski, the impressionist photographer who popularized it, and it combines a motion blurred background with a sharp subject. I can't seem to find a lot about the history of this technique, but I've certainly seen it used quite a bit. So the Adamski technique is kind of a fake version of intentional camera movement, where you use a slow shutter speed on your camera and move your camera from side to side to get some lovely streaks. But in this case, we're doing it in Photoshop and taking it one step further by selecting our subject and keeping them crisp while we blur the background. If you'd like to learn more about how to achieve the intentional camera movement technique, I go into more detail inside my trick photography course, Photo Fanatics. So for this technique to work, you'll first need to choose a scene where you have an identifiable subject and ideally a contrasty and or colorful background that when blurred will create interesting streaks. So it is best if the subject's feet are showing, i.e. they're not lost in grass. And it can help if your subject is in movement. So I first tried this technique with animals that were in movement, but as I progressed and experimented more, I found that it works equally well on images of people and even just stationary items. So not every photo was a winner, but you do tend to have a pretty good strike rate. So for now, we're going to work on this image that I photographed in Malaysia of a man who was clearly a little bit lost looking at his map, but I will show you plenty more examples as we go along and a bit more of an advanced version of this technique. But to start off with, so we this is what this image will end up looking like. I think that's quite cool. I like the original too, but I really like what this has added. Um, you know, the stationary subject and the blurred movement is quite jarring and interesting to the eye. But to start off with, the first thing we need to do is a make a copy of the layer we're going to be working with. So in this case, you would press Control or Command J and you now have your second copy. Just ignore these two layers. That was just my original working file. Next thing we want to do is select our subject. So to do that, the quickest way is to go to select and then subject. Now, hopefully this will do a pretty good job straight out of the box, but it is worth zooming in and checking around the edges of your subject. Your selection will need to be quite accurate for this technique as errors will become noticeable against the blurred background. Now, in this case, you know, it hasn't cut out this section here or this section here between his shirt and the map. And it has included this little shadow on the ground. So how would I get rid of those? So first thing first, I am going to use probably my lasso tool. So that's this one here, third one down, and we will hit lasso. And then I'm going to hold down shift so my icon turns into a little plus. And then begin to drag around the areas that I want to add in. So holding down shift just tells Photoshop that you are adding to a selection. Now you don't have to spend this much time. I just like to show you how to get the very best results. But if you were just using this for something like Instagram, you probably wouldn't even notice. Now I have accidentally added in some extra bits there. So this time, instead of holding down shift, I'm going to hold down alt or option. And that means I can drag things away. Just going back to shift to clean that up. Down shift again, just to straighten that all out. Hopefully yours will just nicely select your subject so you don't need to go to this much trouble. And I will draw those away, draw this away. I find this quite meditative, so it's probably quite dull to watch, but quite interesting to do. Now, 
Now I want our subject on a new layer all by himself. So I'm just going to press Control or Command J and what that will do is take that selected area and just pop it onto its own layer as you'll see here. Now what we need to do is erase him from his initial background because when we blur it, otherwise you're going to get streaks. Um, and I might actually just show you that first of all so you see what not to do. So if I go to Filter, then Blur, and then Motion Blur, and I put that at zero degrees, maybe we'll go about 565. And if I then drop him on, you will see his outline. And we kind of want to get rid of that. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes it really does. And let me see if I can find you an example. So in this one here, you can see this big kind of dark blob in what should actually be quite bright from the sand. So it is best to do this step. So what we need to do is make sure that your copied layer of your background is selected and then we're going to control or command click the layer of just him by himself to reactivate his selection. So now what we want to do is expand this selection a little bit just so that we can make sure that we've got everything and to do that you'll go to select, modify and then expand. And I tend to use 10 pixels in this box, so then I will hit OK. And you'll see that that just popped out his um, selection a little bit more. And then we want to go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. And what that will do is try and make a guess as to what should be behind him without him in it. And you can see the preview over here. It's done a really good job from the looks of things, so I'll just hit OK. And this doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to get this exactly right. It doesn't have to look convincing because you will be blurring it. So now I will press Control or Command D to get rid of that selection. And now you'll see that if I turn his layer off, he's now gone from that original image. However, what it tends to do is pop it onto its own layer. And we need to make sure that that layer and this initial background layer are merged. So what you will do making sure you've got the right layer selected. You don't want the one with your subject on it. You want the filled version, which looks like that. And then control or command click the background layer that you're working with. And we're going to right click and then go to merge layers. So now you've just got the background layer and his layer. So we'll switch him back on just so we can see what we're doing, but we wanna make sure that we have got that background layer highlighted. And then we will go to filter, blur and then choose motion blur. Now you can choose to have that either at um, 90 degrees. We can have it anything you like actually. You know that one looks kind of cool too. I'm just going to go with zero degrees and you can just physically type that in if you like. And then you can experiment with the distance. So we can have quite a lot of blur. We could have just a tiny bit of blur. I think if it's not enough um, it just looks like it was out of focus. It just kind of messes with your eyes. But if you've got quite a lot of blur, I think that can look really interesting, especially if you had a bit of an interesting background. So I'm going to go with 900 for this. And that's our finished result. Pretty cool. So let me show you a few others. So this here is an image of a plane I took over, I think it was Toronto in Canada. So that's what the initial one looked like. I cut out just the plane by itself and then blurred the background. I did it um, vertically, not horizontally. Popped the plane back in and then I really messed with my colors, brought up the saturation quite a bit. So that one's quite interesting. This one I really like. So it initially looked like this, um, which I think is a nice street photo in itself, but um, I really like it blurred. So that was the blurred background and our subject popped in. And I think that one works quite well. And we could actually move him around if we wanted put him somewhere else in the scene. So that's another option too. Once you've got them cut out, you are free to do whatever you want with them. This one here initially looked like this and I really liked it. It's really colorful um, and I just happened to catch this lady as she was walking out the door. So I actually tried this two different ways. So I blurred it um, horizontally and then I also blurred it vertically. So which one do you prefer? I think I prefer the vertically but you've got the option to play with both. And in her case, I didn't just cut out her, I also cut out the doorway. This one here, um, really good subjects to use are statues. So that's what that initially looked like. Again, quite a nice picture in itself. Blurred it, added the subject back, and then I just really pumped up the hue saturation for a bit more color. 
This one here uh, looked initially like this. So I kept her in in the first go and I didn't really like it. So I ended up um, actually content aware filling her out. So then I, as I showed you before with the initial subject, but I did keep these ladies here. So I blurred that scene. So the yellow actually extended, extended all the way across and then popped them back in. And I think that's really nice. Now I'm going to show you how to create this technique. So you'll see that this has both vertical and horizontal blur. And I've got a couple of examples here. They're not great, but you'll just be able to see what you can do. So this one here, I initially, that was the initial scene. Then I masked this bit away and then did a um, motion blur that was vertical to the bamboo. And then I made another copy of the background that was just the fence and blurred that in this direction. So instead of being up and down, it was sort of a little bit diagonal. Then I merged the two together and brightened it up a bit. I don't love it, but it was a nice little experiment. So let us see how to do this chicken. So this one is a little tricky because the chicken is standing in grass and I said not to do that, but it's just what we're working with for the moment. So I'll show you a different way to do it this time. I'm going to use the um, object selection tool. So it's the fourth one down on your toolbar. And if you hold down that icon, you can choose object selection tool. The object selection tool will try and find any subjects that you have. So I can just drag my cursor over it and it will go pink if that's what you've got set. And I can give one click and Photoshop will try and cut that out. As before, the first thing we need to do is Control or Command J to pop that onto its new layer. And then I forgot to unlock my background. So I'll do that and then just make a copy of that for reference. So I just usually keep that as a reference. That's all. You don't even have to do that step. So we do have to do our content aware step, however. So we will make sure that our background layer is selected. Then we will Control or Command click our subject layer to bring it back that selection. Now I will go to Select, Modify, Expand, make it 10 pixels. Then I will go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. It's done a pretty good job. It has left its shadow in, but you know what? I kind of want to keep the shadow so that it looks realistic in the final result. Press Control or Command D to deselect, and then we will select both those layers together. Right click, Merge Layers. Now we are ready to blur, but I'm going to make a copy of this layer so that we can use it later on. And I will flick it off. It might help to name your layers so you know what you're doing. Now we'll go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And I quite like what that's done already. So that was 900 again. We will just say, OK, I'm going to turn that off and then turn that other layer back on. And this time we'll go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And I will change the direction to 90 degrees. I'm just going to actually type in 90 and hit OK. Now we basically need to add a layer mask so that what I want to keep is this section of this layer and then this section of this layer. So you've got some going vertical and some going horizontal. So we will add a layer mask to our top um, background layer. And so a layer mask is just this little box triangle here with a um, hole in the middle. And I am going to go to my gradient tool. So gradient is found under G or it's this one right here. And you want to make sure you can click on this little box up the top here in your options bar that you've got black and white selected. And if you don't, you just need to go into basics and choose this first one. Hit OK. So this is the layer we want to keep this section of. And I actually think I'm going to put my layer mask on the other layer. So I'm going to swap them around, just drag them around and now highlight this layer, give it a layer mask. And using my gradient tool and holding down shift just so I can draw a straight line makes life a little bit easier. I will start to draw from where saying I definitely want this section included and I want you to taper out about this point. And that worked quite well. So now you can see we've got our up and down in this one and then our side to side in this one. And this is what the layer mask looks like. So you can see it just gradually fades out into the other version. You may wish to try and redraw that. I might, you know, that looks a little bit better actually. So that's something you can play around with. You can kind of undo in between with Control or Command Z or you can just keep redrawing. And that's how you get that effect where it is both horizontal and vertical. Now you can see the shadow has kind of blurred into blackness and I actually really like that. One thing you may notice is that the blur starts to kind of taper out towards edges. I'm not quite sure why Photoshop does that, but it always has. And so if that really bothers you, what you could do is press Ctrl or Command T on that particular layer and then just drag out those edges to get rid of it. 
You will kind of move the position of your shadow, however, and that looks a little bit better, I think. So that's how you create the Adamski effect. So just because I went wild on creating examples for this, I'll show you a few more. So this was what I was talking about when I was doing my Animals in Motion series. So this is some kind of heron flying, and then it looked like this when it was um, converted. Here I've got a kangaroo, a wallaby, and then I had this one where all I had was this tiny little man jogging on the beach, and I really quite like how this one turned out too. I think beach scenes are a really good one for this technique, and in fact you most often see this technique used on beach scenes because it does really work well during a kind of sunrise or sunset to capture all those colours and the streaks of the waves. And that's it for the Adamski effect. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if so, be sure to give me a like and subscribe to the channel for more fun future projects. Thank you for watching. Happy creating. Bye.